Here we are, We're going to do keywords, last of the media related videos. Keywords can be used in Family Historian and also in Family Tree Maker for your media files. But one word of warning, keywords are not supported by JEDCOM. What does that mean? That means if you're going to transfer your data from one computer program to another, you may lose the keywords. But don't forget, you've got those embedded in your files, hopefully, so any capable program should be able to restore those. I'm also going to cover some of the filtering that can be achieved in Family Historian, also using those keywords. I also want to cover a little plugin which was developed recently by Mark Draper. Plugins are a bit like bolt-ons, you know, except every user in Family Historian can make use of those. There's over a hundred of them available, so there's going to be one that suits your needs. That differs greatly from the SQL scripts that are developed mostly by Tom Holden for the Roots Magic community, as those require an extra program and they also require a little bit of expertise and knowledge. Anyway, let's get started. Touched on keywords in the last video. This is the default media list screen layout in Family Historian. If I shrink this panel down, this thumbnail panel, you can see there's a lot of data available here. That can all be searched and sorted on. You see the keyword column here for the census return example of Alice, which we entered in the previous video. Loading this view to your preferred view is just a few clicks away. I'm going to cover that in the next video, so if you're subscribed, you'll get a notification from YouTube. We don't have any links to the file at present, so just to remind you of the various ways you can do that, you can right click on the file and add a simple link. You can double click on the file and select the links column and add simple link. You can double click on the thumbnail and on the links add simple link. Or lastly, you can just right click on the thumbnail and add simple link. The add frame link is where you want to select a headshot from a photo or group photo. All that linking was covered in a previous video, so go check that out. That's enough of a recap from now. If I double click on the media record, you'll see all of the data that we entered previously. I want to quickly explain something that's often missed in Family Historian. If I hover over certain fields, you see the little three dots appearing to the right. If I click this one in the date field, you'll see you're presented with a date entry assistant, and that will help you get the date as close as possible. I also get one in the keywords field, and if I select that, I can see my list of keywords is already growing in this demonstration file. My advice would be to keep it simple, think through how you're going to use keywords, and be aware you could easily create a very long list which may not be very helpful. Searching out records is one place keywords could be very useful, but my file naming system already allows me to effectively do that. Again, thought before action is the best policy. You don't need to use my system, but a well thought out naming system will pay dividends. Maybe take time to watch through my video on the subject and also check out the document and the support material describing a system adopted by another user which covers his particular needs. That leads us nicely into searching and filtering. This list we are looking at is new unlinked media, and you'll see the link counts are all zero alongside those files so they all need to be linked up. This is really our first filter. I'll just hit on a few of these. All media speaks for itself. Individual media should only be framed photos of people, profile pictures if you like. I can see a few headstone photos here in this demonstration file, and those need to have their links corrected. Again, that was covered in a previous video. I don't make a lot of use of family facts, but if you want to add marriage photos, then by all means do. Just understand the output and possible quirks by posting on the Family Historian user group first. Family Historian does print marriage photographs alongside the marriage fact in narrative reports. And as with all data entry methods, you will eventually want satisfactory output of your research. And that could be through reports or websites. Event Fact Media Media can be attached to any fact. A lot of what's in this demonstration file would probably be best linked to source citation in my case. The reason it's not is again a throwback to Roots Magic, where the existence of source media was invisible unless it was attached to the fact it supported. You can have place media, and one hope for me is that eventually you'll be able to have address media. That's place details for Roots Magic users. 
That sounds like a plus for Roots Magic, but it's not really. Whilst you get attached media to addresses, there's still no way to add them to reports, so it's a moot subject. I don't have any source media attached to this demo file, but typically that would be the cover of a book, the cover of a parish register or the like, as I'm more of a source lumper than a splitter. That means the majority of my supporting images would be linked to the citation, and here they are. One filter that's not on this drop down list, and I think it should be, is broken links. These are where media files have been deleted or renamed in the operating system, and something which needs to be resolved. The broken links filter is found under the file dropdown on the right. For jumping that topic, Family Historian has an automatic relinking utility, where it will search all of the drives that you have connected to your computer for any of those files with broken links. I believe it should be available under the media selection, where users would expect to find it, but instead you need to select Tools, External File Links, and then select the Auto Repair Links from there. Hopefully the developers will at least duplicate that selection under Media Selection, where users would expect to find it. You can see other options here for Search Text, Find Using Query, and options to display media for selected individuals and family. We'll come back to the Search Text option shortly. The next selection under the Media list is Keywords. Clicking the down arrow, you can see a selection of tags and keywords we've already added. Tags and keywords are the same. If I select Jaeger, we will just get a census return we tagged previously. Except I don't. Look at the selection above and you can see we still have citation media selected. Once I select all media, Family Historian asks for confirmation and there we have the file. You can see these two selections are working together. Now that you're aware of that, rather than being confused, hopefully you're going to use that to your advantage. I've added a burial keyword to a grave marker which is currently linked to an individual profile. If I select individual media followed by the burial keyword, here I have the single media record. All very well, but what if my files don't have keywords? Again, I need to go back to the discipline of preparing your files and naming your files. If you watch my previous video on file naming, you'll see that after more than 20 years, I've now evolved my system to include the JEDCOM tag in the file name. I've just put a slide in the support folder showing all of those common tags because they're not readily available in program. If you've any sort of system, you'll be able to sort file groups out by using the search text option. On this computer and project, all the updating to my latest file naming iteration is not complete but I can still easily sort on the old system. First example is brackets B brackets, which will bring up all my birth registrations and you'll see a lot of these linked or shown as broken. I want headstone, so I'm gonna change that to open brackets BUR as a partial name. Here's all my burial files. One thing that isn't allowed here is control A for me to select all of these records and maybe that's by design. What I'll do is I'll select the first record, scroll right to the last record, and click it whilst holding down the shift key. That's going to select all of these records. Now that they're all selected, I right click and select keywords. You can see some active buttons, one of which is the burial keyword I added before. I'm going to deselect that one, and I need to click twice. In the add box, I'm going to type headstone and click add then OK. If I scroll over and look at my keywords column now, I can see that headstone has been added to all of our selected pictures. Changing back to all media and trying to select burial as a keyword, you can see the burial keyword has now disappeared and we now have headstone in the list. That's because there is no file now containing the burial keyword as I deselected it. So that is how you would remove your keywords if you wished. Moving across and scrolling, I can see keywords in various places and I can sort on these. Click the header to sort ascending and then Alt click to reverse that sort. Selecting the keyword filter headstone, I can see some of these have more than one keyword, pictures and headstones in these examples. I can select all and click twice to deselect the picture keyword if I wish. Again, I have to suggest forethought and experimenting on a copy of your project until you arrive at a system which works best for you. 
There are a lot of very powerful media related tools in Family Historian, and I'm reminded of the garbage in, garbage out well known acronym often used in computer circles. Tiny steps and careful forethought will help you build a quality media collection over time that you can easily drill into just to get the media types you want. Also remember media keywords are not standard JEDCOM, so likely lost on JEDCOM transfer. Remember in Family Tree Maker has had media categories for many many years. I decided to export my Family Historian JEDCOM just now and import it into Family Tree Maker 2019. My family historian keywords did not transfer across. Remember you can also rename media files in Family Tree Maker 2019. Sadly renaming is still not possible in the latest version of Roots Magic. I don't see the loss of keywords between Family Historian and Family Tree Maker as a significant issue. I would only use Family Tree Maker for Ancestry updates and I don't believe Ancestry makes any use of media keywords anyway. We've covered a lot of stuff there. I hope that gives you all the power that you need within your media collection, your media list or media gallery. But certainly Family Historian has more powers than any other program I have tried. Let me have a look at the Mark Draper plugin that I promised you. So once you start installing plugins in Family Historian, you just go to Tools, Plugins, and here we can see the plugin. I'm gonna run that. I get a selection here and I'm going to choose selected folders and subfolders and list files. I can have separate file folder columns or full file path. I'm just going to choose the folder which contains all of my family history and click OK. The plugin runs. I close this and here we have a table describing all of the file names that are in that folder that are not linked to. Don't forget this is a demonstration file. Now what can I do from here? I don't see any options to link them. So I'm going to show you another method. What I can do here is I can do Control A, Control C, and then go to Excel and Control V. And now I have a reference of all of these files and the folders that they're in that are still to be linked up. Now don't forget they're just unlinked probably because this is my demonstration file. Very useful as a side reference. Let me show you my method of sorting out unlinked media and reconciling it with my hard drive. I've cleaned out all of my unlinked media. So the list is empty. So I go to the folder Eagleson again. In the search box I type in kind colon not folder. That gives me a resulting list of all of the media that's in the Eagleson folder and the subfolders. I select them all using Control A and I simply drag them to Family Historian. 1844 files. Now you can see by the scroll bar, Family Historian is doing quite a bit of work and reconciling here. And there we go, transfer completed. You can see some of these files do have links against them. So I've just refreshed my unlinked media and you can see all of the links here are zero. But have they just all been copied on top of the files that I already have? Well, actually no. Let me go to all media again. This time I'm going to find search text and I'm going to put in genealogy backslash Eagleson, which is the root folder of all those files. Click OK. And now you can see that a lot of these have links. What about the new ones? The balance of what is not linked up on my hard drive? Where are those files? Here they are, down the bottom. So that's the process that I do, and it's worked very well for me so far. That's it. I'll put together all these videos into a playlist, and you'll see that. Don't forget, every video has the chapters marked, so you can jump in and out of the chapters wherever you want to. Maybe you want to watch a section again, it's easy to jump back using the chapter scrubber. You'll also find the chapters in the video description. And don't forget I've done a little YouTube presentation. You can slow videos down on YouTube if you want to watch them at a slower pace. If you liked the video and got something from it, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell if you want to get notifications of future videos.
My next intended video is to show you how to set up all of the screens on Family Historia. Every screen can be set up to your custom needs. You could be chasing one area of research, I'm chasing a completely different area of research. Really, almost anything can be added to the screens on Family Historian, so we'll cover that next. Check out the videos on the left if you haven't already done so, and I look forward to bringing you more videos in the near future. Thanks for watching.